my name is Russ Milheim. I'm from the Direct. Thank you for talking to me today about the film. Thanks for having us. Of course. I, I'm going to start with a loaded question for you guys. You know, many people are fans of the iconic, you know, horror film, the, the classic Rosemary's Baby. Uh, and so some people, and, I, and I've talked to people with this this thought process, but they see this movie and they're like, oh, I don't know why that needs to exist. You know, I don't know why I need to watch it. I love the original so much. Why does it? Why does it have the space? So for you guys, in your own words, why did you feel that this story was absolutely worth telling? And what would you tell to those people to be like, look, this is why this is absolutely worth your time? I mean, for me, it's, you know, Terry Gennafrio had been this loose thread that was kind of left hanging in the original movie. I mean, so to speak. <laughs> and so you, I just have that like temptation to just pick at that thread to pull at it. And you know, I had, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up passing the Dakota all the time. And, you know, just thinking of it sort of as this lightning rod for all the sort of like dangerous, satanic, nefarious kind of vibes, these evil vibes, and like the Dakota and its real lore and the Bramford and its fictional lore and the intersection between the two, it, there's so much that's left unexplored, right? It's, this kind of opportunity to imagine these other stories that exist in the cinematic universe of the New York's Upper West Side. <laughs> and it's like, you know, just thinking of, you know, what else could happen. And, you know, for me, it's like, okay, the opportunity's there, but like many, many people, I am a huge Rosemary's Baby fan and do not take it lightly to kind of go back into that work. So I wouldn't have done it if I didn't feel there was something new to say. But being able to look at the story through a new lens of Terry feels important, right? It's a conversation about the victimization of women in this sort of situation that's been happening since the 60s, but seeing it through the lens of a very different type of woman, of an ambitious woman, of a driven woman, of a woman who has her own agency, and sort of seeing, you know, what happens when they pick a victim for the sort of grooming and, and victimization who is a totally different kind of woman and it mm -hmm. kind of sets the story on this trajectory of just a sharp left turn yeah and, and you know similar to those those people i think i think i began as sort of one of those people you know when um you know i came on board with natalie you know so so later in the development process and the idea of being able to write in the Rosemary's Baby universe is freaking amazing. But I, very early on, I, I had a similar reaction, thinking, "Well, what's what story is there to tell?" I I didn't want to redo, re just retell the sim the same beats we know. And then I read Skyler's work, the work she'd done on it, and um, and these two two huge things uh, jumped out at me. One was this, you know, in Rosemary's Baby, Rosemary is um, th these things just, things are happening to her. You know, it's a great film, but things are just happening to her, and. And in Apartment 7A, Terry is driving the story. Her ambition is driving the story. She, her arc is, is almost similar to, to Guy's in the original film. You know, it's, it's that, that ambition. And, you know, in the original film, Guy sacrifices his partner, whereas Terry sacrifices parts of herself. And the, and the closer she gets to her goal, she, she just keeps having to give and give. And, and, and uh, you know, she's shedding parts of herself. Um, that's what I, one of the things I really responded to. And the other was the, the musical angle, you know, I, I was, I'm a big fan of musicals and the idea of kind of stitching this horror story in with, with musical elements and these dark nightmarish musical scenes was just, um, just exciting and fresh and, uh, you know, and very early on in the process, I know I, I'm sure you had to do it too. I had to switch off those voices that said, you're writing in the Rosemary's Baby universe. That's such a big responsibility. Don't, don't fuck it up. You know, <laughs> And I had to turn those off and just think, okay, tell a really cool story, tell Terry's story the, in the best way possible. Um, so yeah, I think for those people, give us a chance for those reasons. Yeah. But, um, you know, the very end, obviously, uh, Terry kills herself. Uh, but in the very last scene also reveals kind of an unrevealed Rosemary, you know, being questioned by the police. Uh, but I, I immediately thought, you know, those two do originally meet uh, in the first film. Um but they don't seem to meet here. Is that a continuity break that you guys did on purpose, or you just you just like that kind of happen off screen, and then you're meant to just assume fill in the blanks? Or well, in the laundry room scene, and this is spoiler free, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Speak freely. Okay. In the laundry room scene, you do see 
Rosemary enter and put down her laundry basket. So there's like a quick glimpse of them sort of passing as ships in the night, which of course in the original movie gives us that scene of them talking in the laundry room. And so, you know, I think that we didn't want to retread any ground. We wanted to sort of just build forward. But for all of those fans of the movie, we kind of loaded it up with Easter eggs. And I think, you know, if you, for anybody who, um, buys it the the digital download when it comes out on the 27th you'll see all these deleted scenes and kind of these cool moments where there is a bit more rosemary and there are you know more sort of hints of, of that original storyline threading through um but you know we, we wanted it to be really fresh we wanted it to be able to stand on its own for people who hadn't seen the original or weren't fans of that movie so we tried to layer it in there for the hardcore fans yeah yeah i remember early on really not wanting to see an aged down uh, Mia Farrow. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to see that kind of CG face. Um, and, and I think that we sort of leaned, We you know, there was versions where we did really lean in um, and I think then we kind of leaned away as, so as not to, um, you know, if we had a re-seen, if we had a seen that laundry scene, totally it would have been, would have played so much differently because, you know, now now we know Terry, she's got all this emotional baggage, we know where she's going, and it just would have felt, um, it just felt almost sacrilegious, I think, in a way. It's almost like, well, that let, let's let that scene be in the original. And and in my mind, they they still met off, you know, off camera, off page. Uh, that's still consistent, internally consistent. But, um, yeah, there's something about, there's something kind of, I was worried about putting too much Rosemary in, you know. I don't, I didn't think, we, we've, we've seen her story, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, obviously this is the spinoff, right? If you could explore another spinoff or even maybe a sequel, do you guys have any ideas of what you might want to, what, what gaps are there? What would you want to further dive into? Cause you seem to really enjoy being in this world. So I'm sure you guys have thought about it. Trench sisters for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's the, the wonderful thing about the Bramford, right? Is that it's just filled with like lunatics. Um, and so, you know, you have cannibals, you have witches, you have, yeah. you know, um, all of these things that are sort of like boiling over in this big melting pot there. So I think that there is so much with to do with that. Also, there was um Originally, there had been a, an opening scene that I had written for the film, which is, um, it sort of tells the story of Adrian Marcato and a young Roman, and he's they're uh, out together and church lets out, and they the churchgoers recognize Adrian Marcato as the conjurer of the devil, mm -hmm. and so they kind of chase him into the Bramford, where he's carrying Roman as a young boy. Yeah, and so, that scene is great. Yeah, and, and then, you know, him getting beaten within an inch of his life in the lobby, um, bold way to open a movie so we ended up going into sort of, um, a different space with it but I think that that Adrian Marcato lore is just really really rich I would I would like to see a dark mini series where it's Roman and Minnie in their 30s yeah. just living their life you know and the, the you know the and the satanic stuff is almost secondary to their story you know yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to now last question for you guys um you know there's tons of gaslighting in this film uh can you talk about exploring that topic and you know how you got terry to the point at the end of the film where she you know she does go along as a ruse to get herself where she needs to be to at least end the cycle in her in her way mm -hmm. yeah you go ahead uh, you know i think that there are the element of grooming is something that's very very real it's something that happens all the time um you know as much fun as this is to sort of play with this this kind of spooky world the idea of cultism and grooming and foundational trauma and exploiting that trauma is something that you know i wanted to be very sincere in the portrayal mm. of that it's you know obviously a serious topic and you know it it it's due attention and so i think that you know, portraying those themes, you know, we we felt a responsibility to handle those in a mm. in a certain way with with sort of harsh, true light. Um, yeah, I think there's there's a temptation sometimes to to skirt those sort of subjects or to to kind of ride around them. Um, but but it's always most compelling when you just go directly through them, and and it's harder. But but I think that forces you to kind of find interesting ways to 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 say what you need to say and deal with those subjects. And I think. Um, yeah, for us it was was always, hey, we've there's certain things that 
we just are going to have to run at and and lean into them and instead of sort of trying to dodge them we just leaned we leaned in and that was always um that was always really important we never faced any resistance or anything like that we it was i think everyone was on the same you know had the same agenda so let's just let's not pretend that yeah. these things aren't happening you know yeah it, it's funny a woman stopped me after the screening yesterday at the draft house and she said by the time Terry is sitting in that windowsill, I was saying out loud, do it, girl, do it. And, you know, it's a it's a really strange thing to root for. But that's sort of the thing of this body horror, right? Of like, Terry's body is her instrument. Mm -hmm. And you just see her losing it piece by piece and losing her sense of self. And so in that final moment, when she just crushes that dance, and she takes back that power, and she's just claws back this sense of autonomy and control over her own body. It's like, you were just rooting for her to do the damn thing at that point. So. Yeah, because you you had that's that, that's always that has to be the ending. Her, she has to go out that window, and so it has to be a tragedy. It has to end in this really tragic, heartbreaking way. So what we did, we just wanted that to be a little bit of hope. As strange as that sounds, a little bit of hope, and and it to feel hopefully slightly cathartic in a strange way as well. And, and um, credit to Julia for yeah. finding the power in that moment because yeah. she is a badass bitch there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for talking to me. Yeah, you know, thank I, you. I, I enjoyed it, and I hope everyone else enjoyed it uh, at the at the festival. But yeah, thank you again, and I look forward to whatever the next entry in the cinematic universe is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Lovely you. meeting thank you. you. Thank you.